Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Christ Central Daily Devotionals. My name's Fiona, and today we are going to be reading from Romans 6. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under law but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one to whom you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to use offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever increase in wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So Paul starts by posing the question, shall we continue to sin? Because we're now no longer under the law, but under grace. Does it matter if we continue to live a lie, life of perpetual sinning, because God is bountiful in grace and forgiveness? Well, it would appear then that grace can be or could be pretty dangerous because there's always a get out clause when we frequently and inevitably mess up. But Paul makes it very clear that this is totally unacceptable. He uses the words by no means, or as we might say, absolutely not. Christ paid an enormous price for our salvation and our relationship with sin is permanently changed. We were dead in sin, but now we have died to sin. You have been set free from sin, hurrah, as Ken would say. Paul is talking about habitual sin, things we've got in the habit of doing. We can tell this by the use of the um, continual tense that he uses throughout the passage. So what exactly is the difference? Well, my understanding from these verses is that grace is there as a safety net only when we slip up unexpectedly. Sometimes we're convicted with our consciences of having said or done something that we don't usually do. We instantly repent because we feel really awful and ashamed and we rely on grace at this point. But we have learned a usually very horrid and unpleasant lesson. We've let ourselves down and sometimes we upset other people as well. It's not a place we want to be in and we don't we don't go back. But how about all these habitual sins? Well, these are the things we keep doing time and time again. And often the edge of the disappointment has kind of worn away a bit. We maybe keep looking at things we know we really shouldn't look at. We say hurtful things. We're tired and we pick a fight. The result is the same every time and yet we continue to do it. We know if we open a bottle of wine, it won't be one glass. And we also maybe know we have some issues with food. We know the answer is to walk away from the cupboard, but we don't. So what's the answer? Well, according to Paul, it's simple. Don't offer the parts of your body to sin. You have eyes, but don't look at inappropriate materials. You have ears but switch off from the continual gossip or negativity. You have lips, but use them to build up rather than destroy character. Your body is your weapon in the battle for righteous living. Paul says you were slaves to sin, now be slaves to righteousness. Also, Paul says, we must take a stand against habitual sin. 
we're never going to eradicate sin this side of heaven, but we can stop it having dominance over us. We don't have to say, well, do you know what? That's just me. I'm just, I'm just angry. That's just what I do. I can't help it. I love food too much. I always eat and eat and drink and drink. It's just me. I can't help it. But Christ died to give us freedom. And we're told that the benefit leads to holiness. Now, when I read this passage in preparation for day for today, I had a bit of a fresh revelation. And I realized that actually I don't have to continue on this same old trajectory of continuing the same old thing, doing the same thing, feeling guilty, excuses, try again, feeling guilty, excuses, try again. No, actually, I can be free from it. Sometimes we can make this stand on our own. If our sin is habitual, we know the triggers, don't we? And we know that how it will start and we know how it's going to end. But sometimes we've been locked in for a little bit too long and we need a bit of help. Maybe you need to get some friends alongside you, your connect group, or maybe you need a bit of prayer in the devotional times. Maybe you might need to do a Freedom in Christ course. Or maybe you might actually need a little bit of professional help. And that's OK. That's good. But it's worth pursuing. So as we go into a time of prayer, let's ask God to highlight the areas where we can focus on making a stand today. Thank you very much. <laughs>